This website will demonstrate how to associate a data source with a website and also how to use that data source to populate a drop-down list control. Such a control would render on the client web browser in HTML as an HTML select tag. The first thing that we need to do is to create a local website that runs off our computer. To do that in Studio, I choose File, New Website, ASP.NET Website, and make sure the location set to File System, and then it'll put it at a location where I can work with it locally. I'm going to hit OK. The website's created, and we're looking at the HTML view of the ASPX file that we'll be working with in this site. So now, considering that I'd like to add a control to this page, I want to switch to the design view. And I already know in advance that I want to work with customer data, so I'm going to give it a little label of customer, and then this panel to the left is the toolbox, and it lists many controls that are available for ASP.NET web pages. The ones we're working with are in the standard toolbar. As you can see, I'm expanding and collapsing it. The standard toolbar has a control called drop down list. I'm going to drag it to the page and it makes a menu appear, but I'm going to ignore the menu for now. And instead I'm going to go to the source view. So what you can see is that this is a combination of HTML and server side code. The server side code is indicated by the tags that begin ASP colon drop down list. If a web browser tried to run that control, it would, it would encounter an error. It wouldn't know what to do with it. That control will vanish by the time this becomes a true web page for use in a browser. It will be replaced by an HTML select tag. Now back on my design view, I'd like to go back to that menu we just saw. So I hold my mouse over the control and I see a little arrow. And when I click that arrow, I can choose a data source. Now the problem we have is we can't yet do this action because we need our data source to already be associated with our website. So my very next action is to work with a folder for the project called App Data. It's predefined when you create a new website for Visual Studio. But App Data is a special place where you can store database files such as Access and they won't be available for download by users of your website. So I right click App Data and I choose Add Existing Item and then I have to navigate using the folder uh, drop list to where I have my Northwind database. In this case, I have it in my documents under a folder called Northwind, and there's the file, northwind.mdb. Depending on your settings on your computer, you may not see a file extension. It just depends on if you've chosen to view those in your settings. So now I click Add. I now have Northwind MDV available in my data folder. So, and I have different options I can do with it, but for now, all we want to do is use it for our control. So I, I hold my mouse over the control again, I click the arrow, and I, I select Choose Data Source, and it gives me a chance to select a data source. This data source is not the same thing as what we just saw over under App Data. It is not literally going right to the database. Instead, it's going to create a special web control that doesn't show up on a page, but does control the relationship between the database and our web page. So again, back in our wizard, I, ch I select Choose Data Source, New Data Source from the list, and from here I choose that I wish to work with an access database. It's going to give that linking object that we described before a name and I hit OK. It just needs to know where the file is so I choose browse and you can see my app data folder but as you can tell I have no other place I can look for a database. I can't navigate around my computer. I can only go to where the website is allowed to get a file from and then in this case it's the app data folder and I can choose Northwind MDB and hit OK and hit next and look at this I'm now seeing all the objects available from that database I'm seeing um, tables and views that are available in this database so given that I'm, I named my drop-down list customers I want to show the customers um, contact name in the list and it creates a select statement select contact name from customers and I want to also click return unique rows they may be unique in this table, but it's a nice practice to follow when you're configuring a data bound control so you don't get redundant entries. Now I'm going to choose next. I can test my query. So what we're seeing here is the list of names that would appear in my control when the pages run. The next thing I do is click finish. Everything's defined for me now. 
Now I do have a choice here where internally I can store a different value than the user sees that I can handle behind the scenes. At this point that's not important to me, so I'm just going to click OK. My control is now configured. For us to see what happens when the page runs, I need to choose the file I'm working in. Well first I need to save everything. But then I need to choose the file I'm working in, right click it, and choose Set as Start Page. Now I can actually go to my website and my menu for um, debugging the website and I can choose to start debugging. So I click this icon, it goes through some steps, it asks me if I want to modify my web file to enable debugging, I do, that's fine. And it gives me some warnings from Internet Explorer, I want to continue debugging. A lot of security on these steps. So now that our page is rendered, we can examine it a little bit. You can tell Internet Explorer has turned on its information bar uh, security warning, so the page won't fully run. Internet Explorer certainly has its quirks, and it actually doesn't even work as well with Studio when it comes to playing like this. However, um, if you want to dynamically debug JavaScript, Internet Explorer is the only browser you can do that in. So it really depends on what you're trying to achieve and also depends on what your customers are likely to be using. Now what we can do here is notice we have a drop list. This matches what we defined and we can see all the data from the table. On the, the back end of the page it generated dynamic HTML and you can see a select element from HTML uh, named drop-down list 1 with option elements defined for every single row. So all of this was created for us automatically by ASP.NET. And that concludes our video.